Mount Rushmore of professional wrestling itself. And again, can't stress this enough. This is my list, my particular opinion, my subjective opinion. And of course, most of you will not agree with it because, well, you all have different opinions. You all have different stars that you would slot into these four very exclusive spots when it comes to pro wrestling. Now, with that said, I'm talking about pro wrestling business, how much business, how much importance they had in the pro wrestling industry throughout the decades, throughout the years. So it's not just about the best performer, the best in technical wrestler. No, it's not, it's not even how much accolades, how many accolades rather they were able to achieve. To me, as far as this list goes, pro wrestling business wise, these are the four men more deserving, more iconic when it comes to professional wrestling nowadays. And of course, I just want to put a little uh, exclusivity on this. I'm talking about 1984 pretty much forward or a little bit earlier. But again, that's just the booming of sports entertainment itself rather than pro wrestling. So with that said, let's get into the honorable mentions. And of course, there's a lot of honorable mentions that... Uh, deserve to go on this list that didn't quite make the cut for diverse reasons. Simply put, we got to talk about uh, Triple H, one of the most uh, influential men currently in professional wrestling, but to the point that he was doing business as the four men that I have on this list, not so much. Goldberg, look, it's hard to argue he was not the face of the company in WCW uh, back in 98, 99, but you know, he was one of the biggest home run stars in WCW. That undefeated streak, one of the most historic uh, events to ever happen, not only in the Monday Night Wars, but in pro wrestling itself. Not quite enough to make it into this list. Macho Man Randy Savage, the late great Macho Man. Look, one of the best performers of all time. He had his time. Hulk Hogan gave him that opportunity back in the 80s. But back then, you know, Hogan was on top of the world. There was no one who could move him. No one uh, big enough who could move him. So, yeah, Macho Man Randy Savage didn't quite make the list. He was, in my opinion, a number two in his era. So there's no absolutely no way he can make it in this list. We got the Legend Killer, the Viper, the Apex Predator, whatever you want to call him, Mr. RKO himself, Randy Orton. Put him in the same boat as a Triple H. One of the all-time greats, super... Supernatural when it comes to the ring, not a step being missed to this day at his 43 years old, but not quite enough to make it on this list. We got Shawn Michaels and Bret the Hitman Hart, two of the absolute best in ring performers, bar none, for different reasons, obviously in different ways as well. But you know, it's safe to say their era, early 90s, early to mid 90s, was one of the most, how do I put it, least successful. Errors in professional wrestling to the point that we had Diesel, Big Daddy Cool, Kevin Ash Diesel as World Wrestling Federation champion at that time. Yeah, not 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 enough to make it on this list. We got John Cena, 16-time world champion, the face that runs the place. The main reason why pro wrestling has survived in the casual and in the mainstream viewers' eyes to this day. Uh, it was hard for me not to put him on this list, but again. It, you know, compared to the ones I do have on this four, on on these four slots, come on, we gotta take it easy. Roman Reigns, of course, and that's mo and that's mainly because of the run he's currently in at this time. But we still have to finish, wait and wait and finish, wait and see how he finishes his career, how he finishes his current run with the company, and of course, the final honorable mention on this list. And again, I know I'm gonna be missing a lot of them, but I'm talking about. Mostly superstars that I've seen, that I've witnessed. And of course, we got to talk about the man with the undefeated streak, the godfather of WWE, the Undertaker himself. It was very hard not to put him on this pro wrestling Mount Rushmore. But again, compared to the four men that are actually on this list, he wasn't as influential. He didn't do as much business. Hard to argue against that. So with that said, here are my four most influential, most successful, most business-provoking superstars 
when it comes to professional wrestling, you already know them. And this is a very short, short Mount Rushmore because, again, these are just my picks. And I'm not going to argue as to why they're on this list. I'm just going to say that they've made the most business sense-wise for the company, for the industry itself. So it just makes sense to put them here. But again, most of you will have your own different opinions. So with that said, we're going to talk about Hulk Hogan, Hulkamania, Rock and Wrestling Era, then the Hollywood Hogan years, and the NWO, then Hulkamania back in 02. He he made quite a spike, no pun intended, no pun intended uh, in, the, in, in the early 2010s for TNA. Hulk Hogan has got to be considered in this list. Uh, then we got Rock and Austin, The Rock, Stone Cold Steve Austin, two of the biggest stars to ever come out of professional wrestling during the Attitude Era. It just, it is what it is. And again, the very, the only era in WWE and in professional wrestling, in my opinion, back then in the Attitude Era, back then 2000, 2001, when you couldn't decide, do you like Austin more? Do you like The Rock more? Who's on top? Who's the face of the company? Who's the better superstar? Who's the better wrestler? Who is their most popular? And we just didn't get to see that ever again. We haven't seen that ever again. In the 80s, Hogan and Savage? No. Hogan and Warrior? No. Brett and Sean? No. Cena and Batista? No. Cena and Orton? No. Triple H and pretty much Lesnar? No. So, yeah, so that's why I'm putting them on that list. And finally, we got to talk about the 16-time world champion. Some people call him the 19-time, 21-time world champion. Ric Flair, Nature Boy. Huh, come on. You can't have a list of the most successful, of the most influential, of the guys that did the most business. Hell, the main reason why NWA and WCW was able to stay afloat and compete against WWE back in the day was because of the man known as Ric Flair, Nature Boy. And he is still, in the eyes of the casual viewer, the greatest of all time. And it's hard to argue against it. It's hard to argue against the Nature Boy's accolades, his career of work, putting so many guys over, his feuds against Dusty Rhodes, against Sting, against Hogan in WCW, his time in WWE. A little bit tarnished, yes, because he's been coming in and out of retirement. But again, what Ric Flair did for the business, what they, what he did for WCW back in the day, hard to argue. And again, and again, this is my list: Flair, Hogan, Rock, Austin. Those are my four members of Pro Wrestling's Mount Rushmore. Nobody can move them off of the li- uh, off of that list anytime soon. And of course, most of you are going to be screaming at the freaking screen right now because you're going to be talking about Harley Race. All-time great. Absolutely. You're going to be talking about Bruno San Martino. Fantastic. Seven plus years as, as champion. It's hard to argue against that. But in today's pro wrestling world, I think these four men did the most business. And it just, it is what it is. It's my, it's my list. Most of you will not agree with it. I am completely fine with it. So with that said, what are your thoughts? Who would you slot in? Am I crazy for having these four men on the Mount Rushmore and taking all these other men out? Leave your thoughts, comments, predictions, and complaints in the comment section below. In the meantime, I'm Alexis Carrillo. This has been Wrestling Talk, and I'll see you next time.